Welcome to the Julia and Gino podcast, where business meets family. We explore what the entrepreneur life looks like from a family perspective. We are your hosts, Julia and Gino Barbaro. Hey, everyone. This is Julia Barbara, host of the Julia and Gino podcast. I am here with the co-founder of Jake and Gino, my husband and co-host, Gino Barbara. Hi, Julia. Hey. How you doing? I am awesome. What are we doing today? Uh, I just, I'm, we're, we're, we're getting to meet a new person. I love meeting, you know, new, especially authors, wives, family, women. I just, I love it. So I'm excited about this So this podcast. author's written seven books. And as I said to her before the show, most Americans don't even read seven books in their lifetimes. And she's <laughs> written seven books. So she's written her most recent one, 52 Weeks in the in, in the Word. We're going to go over that one as well. But we're excited to be interviewing Bible study teacher and author of numerous titles. Like I said, <laughs> Trisha Newell, a busy mom of two very active teens. Trillia knows the struggles moms face when they try, try, try to create and keep a Bible readings plan. Trillia's newest book, 52 Weeks in the Word, a companion for reading through the Bible in a year. She teaches us how to start a year-long reading plan throughout the Word of God. Welcome, Trillia. Welcome. Thank you. <laughs> Glad to be here. We're super excited to have you. And I, I just curious, you know, what, what, tell me why you started writing all these books. What was your, um, you know, what was your idea? Like, uh, you know, what was the first book you wrote? Why did you write it? And why did you continue? Because I do know for myself, my husband, we all have these ideas and we want to, you know, take action and, and really make a difference in the world. But what actually was it that said, I'm actually going to do it? Yeah, well, it's interesting. I was a freelance journalist, so I wrote for my local paper. It's called the Knoxville New Sentinel, since I know you are familiar with Knoxville. <laughs> and so I did featured stories there and um, I loved it, but I didn't have a chance as a freelance journalist to write from a Christian perspective because I'm reporting and you're not supposed to do that. And so I wanted to be able to write from that perspective. And so I started doing a blog and started doing, um, wh which back then was a big deal. Now, not so much, but I started blogging and people just started taking notice. And it it was the, the different articles that just connected with different people. And that's when I wondered if the Lord might have a, an opportunity or something for a broader audience. And it was confirmed when one of one of my articles went, I call it Christian viral. <laughs> so not really viral, just just viral in a really small space. And um, and publishers started reaching out to me. So I actually didn't set out to go and write all these books. And once they did, I because I was a writer and I did enjoy writing, I I I sat down and thought, okay, if there's something here, may it be so. And clearly it was so. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and so that's how I got started though. It was freelance journalist and being faithful to to serve through writing on a blog and articles. Maybe you should tell your fellow journalists that there shouldn't be writing from a slant, whether it's Christian, whether it's secular, it's really not opinionated stuff. I'm just saying, I don't just know saying. if you're doing it, you could do it yourself, but I guess... You know, it's it's amazing. Uh, when did you become a Christian? Oh, I love that question. I became a Christian at the age of 22. Ooh. So I was a young adult. And when I was 19, someone shared the gospel with me or the good news. And I kind of rejected it, but not, you know, I heard her and I actually, I, I, it, I felt something like, Lord, is this true? Okay, but I didn't want to submit my life to the Lord. And so I kept walking the way I wanted to walk. <laughs> and then after two broken engagements, I was pretty humbled and went to her church and I was, I became a Christian. I gave my life to the Lord and um, the rest is history from there. It's actually pretty remarkable. What was holding you back from giving your life to the Lord early on? Well, you know, I would say there were a few things. One was kind of fear of some, I knew that if I um, was to proclaim that I was a Christian, I need to live like a Christian, <laughs> that I knew that that meant I was going to be submitting my life to the Lord. I was going to be giving over my life. And I, I had some, some fear about holding on, like, ah, I don't know. I don't know if this is actually freedom. Is this freedom? I don't know. I also had a boyfriend. <laughs> And I didn't want, I was, I was, yeah, I didn't want to give up 
uh, being with him or that, the, mm -hmm. yeah, I just thought I knew what I would need to do if I, if I said yes to the Lord. Mm -hmm. Um, but the Lord took care of that because I had two burglary engagements <laughs> and both were with him. Mm -hmm. And, um, and miraculously, gosh, about a year after I gave my life to the Lord, he did too. And we've now been married for 19 years. So wow. <laughs> the Lord amazing. redeemed all of that, <laughs> our story. But yeah, those would be the two things that I think held me back because be, walking with the Lord is submission to the Lord. Exactly. Those who shall be humbled shall be exalted, and those who I, are exalted shall be humbled. Julia, I, I am awesome, I, Julia, I okay? <laughs> <laughs> I do love that you told that story because that happens to so many of us. And, you know, I talk to a lot of women, especially a lot of families, and even just their values. Like, what do you hold value? And, you know, for me, it's God. God first, my husband. And the question I always ask is, are you living according to your, to, to those values? Mm -hmm. And everyone's like, oh yeah, yeah, definitely. And I'm like, all right, give me some examples. Oh, okay. <laughs> and then it's like, wait a second, maybe I'm not. Yeah. Maybe I'm not because when we actually ask ourselves the, that question, it's, you have to be honest and say, I'm not yeah. living according to, and like you said, you, you kind of wanted to hold on to that other life and we had to let go of it. Oh, that's so hard, isn't it? But it's not looking back. It's like, actually, it was the, 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 the most beautiful thing I ever did. And it was true freedom. hundred <laughs> percent. Because it's like not your will at that point. It's like, all right. <laughs> so Trillia, when you saw this and you started uh, reading the Bible, was it challenging for you at first? When you started picking it up, you see all the different books and, and, and the way it's written. And was it challenging for you? Because it's still challenging for me to this day. It's still challenging for me to this day, too, because mm -hmm. there's so much especially in the old testament i would say the new testament um it wasn't it wasn't hard but i don't think i and especially now that i've really read it i realized how much i would skim or i didn't know what i didn't know so you just read and mm -hmm. you don't realize that oh this has a, a real context and if you don't know the old testament it's really mm -hmm. hard to understand the new and so and so but that i think is the beauty of it all we will be learning for eternity. Mm -hmm. We're never going to arrive. There's so much richness and depth in the scriptures that I, I don't know. I find it really exciting that almost every time I pick up the Bible and I read through it, I learn something new. Mm -hmm. So yeah, when I first, I barely knew the gospel whenever. <laughs> so I was learning everything and I devoured um books and the the bible and i was just trying to study to learn as much as i could and um so yeah it was it was very much confusing to me at first and it continues to be a a discipline and a joy to learn mm -hmm. because there's so there's a lot in there sure i have to admit this it's it's really hard for me to read especially the old i'm gonna i'm with you i actually have started last year listening to a podcast which is called bible in a year with Father Mike Schmitz. And funny enough, that was like the number one podcast during COVID. And I thought, well, that's some good news. That is. <laughs> Isn't it? That <laughs> okay. is. People are, you know, mm -hmm. a little scared maybe. And Trillia, let's say a person is listening to this and they're overwhelmed. And they're saying to themselves, yes. how do I start? What habits? Because you said discipline. Because yes. anything in life, you 100%. need discipline, you need to build habits. How can I pick up the Bible and start incorporating it into my life? You know, you mentioned at the top of our time together that I wrote a book called 52 Weeks in the Word. And um, the goal of that book is to help someone, mm -hmm. either they, whether they've read the Bible 50,000 times mm -hmm. or they've read it for the, or they're just picking it up. Mm -hmm. It's, it helps organize it for someone who maybe is kind of unsure of how to read or where to begin. I just begin in Genesis. However, someone else might begin in Matthew, and and then that's okay. I think the 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 goal is to ask the Lord for help, pick it up, and read. And 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 I I, I think if you whether wherever you begin, um, the discipline really is about getting getting yourself in a place where you can read or listen or however you want to engage the word, I think is it's just really important. Um, one real practical tip um, is to, and this sounds very practical, but we put, we schedule everything. Mm -hmm. We schedule this podcast. Mm -hmm. So we, why don't we schedule something like 
Bible reading or to put it in there because that might help you to make a habit, to build that habit and that muscle. We we know if for coffee drinkers, if we're going to get up, we're going to get that coffee going. No one has to tell us to do that. <laughs> we're and so that kind of it's a habit. We can do the same thing with Bible reading and it not be legalistic in other words it can be um you can do that knowing that it you won't it doesn't you won't earn any favor before the lord it's not that it's not adding any kind of rule it's for your joy it's so that you can know him and so and so i hope yeah i think that we just have to build that muscle especially also with covid where that could have atrophied because of um, just the busyness of life and mm-hmm. all the new and different things that we've been exposed to. So I think we can do it. Mm-hmm. And how do you incorporate it with your family, with your children and your husband? Yeah, that's important. I have to just put that out there because a lot of us, we really do, you know, like I said, we homeschool and I'm like, all right, kids, you're going to do you know, Bible history now or history or whatever it is. Yeah. And then I don't live by it. And then I, you know what I mean? I'm like, it's like, all right, I'm going to go in the kitchen. I <laughs> talk to you later. So it's our, you know, it's a big responsibility that we have as parents to pass along our faith to our children. Absolutely. Okay. I'm really glad that you said, and then I don't do it. Yes. <laughs> oh my <laughs> gosh. That's, that's most of us. Most yes. of us, if you set out, okay, we're going to have family devotions every Monday. <laughs> it's very, it's like, stop doing that. <laughs> Quit, close your mouth. Get that out of your mouth. You know, like it's a mass chaos. Yes. However, it's it's worth the trying. But for us, we have teens. We are mostly in lots of conversations with them. And we're also modeling it. Mm-hmm. So we're sitting down and having a our what quiet time or whatever you want to time it, call it. And they they see it. They see that, oh, mom's at the table reading her Bible. Um, and so there's a modeling, and then dinner time, there's conversation. We do not i okay i did read mere christianity with my son Mm -hmm. and we would have we would talk through it and i'd have i did a bible study where i with my daughter so that i am we are in that is some intentional discipleship that i've done Mm -hmm. but daily bible reading is mostly just lived out in front of them and just talking hey what are you doing what are you reading what are you thinking and and that's I love I love that you're realistic because <laughs> because I, I think a lot of our audience needs to hear that. You know, they see you, you know, you have all these books, you know, very successful. They see us. My husband's very successful, <laughs> you know. Yeah, you're successful too. <laughs> <laughs> and and but it, we are realistic. We mess up quite often. And you know, we were like, oh, I, I never, you know, I think about our oldest, and I'm like, I really uh, lacked certain things. And I look back and I really am hard on myself and regret and all that stuff. But it also, they learned a lot of things on their own that they wouldn't have learned had I, you know, structured their life so perfectly according to what in my, my head was the plan. You know what I mean? Oh yeah. Well, (laughs) and you all know, we, what is the scripture? (laughs) Many of the plans are in a man's heart, but the Lord directs his steps. We have a whole lot of plans and it's, yeah, we yes. we can do only what we can do, but the Lord is so faithful and good. And I do believe, even listening to you guys, I feel pretty confident that the Lord is using <laughs> your example to um, shine bright Jesus to your kids. Thank you. It means a lot. You wrote here. There's a question that you 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 wanted to share with us, and it's, I've been looking at this and I'm pondering. What's the difference between reading it and studying the Bible? I mean, like I'm a really good reader. You skim through it, but when you study it, what is the what are the differences? Well, you use the word skim, and that's a really good one for me to grab onto. Mm-hmm. Reading is really about comprehension. You're going to be reading to understand it, to grow, and to be honest, sometimes you skim through. <laughs> you see all those lists of names, and you're like, "Okay, we're going to get through it, get through it." Um, in terms of the scriptures, but when you're studying, a lot of people use what's called inductive. Bible study. So you might observe the text. Um, you're going to interpret. So observing, you're looking at the context, interpreting, you're cross-referencing, you're trying to um, figure out what the the original uh, writers would have been trying to say in the Greek or Hebrew. So you're that's interpreting. Mm-hmm. And then you're applying. So 
those that's a studying it's a deep dive into the text where reading is you're you're reading through you're gonna you might um experience those three things of observation understanding the context um interpretation and application because the the word is living and active so you're you're likely going to experience that but when you're studying it's more concentrated now here's the thing <laughs> you cannot study without reading so take hebrews 11 for example hebrews 11 is what people call the great cloud of witnesses and in it is the hall of fame of faith so you get all of these people like enoch and Abraham and Sarah and Moses and Rahab and all of these people who had David, who had strong faith. Well, you, you can read that list and you said, you can say they had strong faith. They, they did this. They, um, God called them wise or um, Enoch, he walked with God and it pleased him. Well, what does that mean? If you don't go to Genesis five, you're, you're not gonna know what that means. So you've got to read the 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 text if you're learning about rahab but you don't go to the old testament and understand the story and why what she was doing with the the um the spies and all the the whole story and the jericho and all <laughs> you're not going to understand it you're not going to get the faith part so you have to be reading in order to fully understand the um what even something like Hebrews 11 is talking about. So they go hand in hand, but studying is a little deeper. What part of the Bible do you struggle with as far as reading a story? And I can give you an example. When I always read the parable of the prodigal son, oh it gosh. took me like 20 years it's to like figure that out. And it's just like, I'm like, man, the older son is getting the shaft. You know, the younger son, but I get the parable now, but it took me a long time. And I wrestled with that for years. Do you wrestle with any stories in the Bible? Okay, so... Interestingly, okay, I, that wrestling, like, I'm, I, that could be, maybe there's a, a, a unique interpretation of it. And, and I would be really curious to hear what your I can tell are. you what it is. <laughs> so the, the, th the thoughts are, I'm the older, responsible, the older brother in great brother life. who crushes it, does everything he's supposed to. And I'm not saying it's my younger brother, but I could see as, as an older person doing everything responsibly being there for the dad, taking care of everything. And then all of a sudden the younger one goes out and squanders everything, loses everything, and then comes back. And my, the dad has not put any, any uh, love towards the oldest son. Although I understand that like, you're there, I, you know, you're part of my life, but then the younger son comes back. And I understand the parable of, of, of being the lost son and how Jesus has that one sheep that he's lost mm -hmm. and brought back. I get that all conceptually. <laughs> I'm, I'm talking about reality. I'm talking about <laughs> feelings and emotions, right? Yeah. I'm like, yeah. this dude, this dude went out, he partied. Being I didn't dad. party. I went out to the field. <laughs> I'm, I'm, the, I'm, I'm going, I work the fields every day. I did the books. I did the payroll. I, you don't worry about nothing, Pops. The money's coming in. All of a sudden, my brother comes back and goes, we're killing the cow. That's not – what happened about me? I don't get any feasts. My friends ain't come over to party. This guy came back. He, came, he doesn't have sandals on, and you're hooking him up? And what about me? That's that's how I used to feel. I don't feel that way anymore, but you can yeah. see how, you can see how it is. <laughs> this is the absolute best conversation ever, first of all. But um, I love it. Well, yeah, I think I, I, I think that would be really interesting. And those, those are the kinds of engagement in the scriptures that are exciting. And I think, I think that's a fair question. Like, wait a minute. But I, can, I can't even remember the end of the story. That's so funny because the the older son wasn't rejected, right? He was no, no, so and he was loved and cared for. Okay, yes. so anyways, mm -hmm. which is a good thing. Yeah. So anyways, sure, but the good thing it's about more about that, me though, Trillia. It's, it's more about, about me and how I'm interpreting it. Oh, I'm like, it. what was well, the book that we that we it, 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 it was uh, it was it's the, called the Prodigal Son. It's beautiful. Yeah. They, we have a picture at, at church. We walk in. You actually see yeah. the painting. Yeah. Um, who, who did the painting? Rembrandt. Gosh, Rembrandt did yes. the painting. And yeah. you look at it. Book the Prodigal Son, and it talks about the painting, and it talks about the parable, and. And how and the, the father end. is the father and he's also the mother because he's taking it's just it's just yeah. amazing. And yes, you see yeah. the older son who's there and he's really stern. I'll tell you what helps you understand when I put your two two of your girls in the same situation as the boys, and I said, You're the father. Now look at it from his uh -huh. perspective. Yes. And <laughs> that was the time yes. you're like, Oh, okay. Yes, yeah, no, so. I, I, I just get it's it. interesting when we take our we always 
choose. I know I don't even know where we're, we're going with this conversation, well, but we always I know, choose yeah, I know where we are. one character and put ourselves in just their shoes. Mm -hmm. And it's a yeah. good opportunity to say, okay, let me see the other side to it or or one of the sides to it. Well, and and what I love about this is that we always we most of us would put ourselves in the father's shoes. Yes. Yes. No, not most of us would say, wait a minute. I'm the older brother. <laughs> <laughs> I think a lot of the moms would put ourselves in the father's shoes. Well, not, so. <laughs> just saying. I, I never did. And it's it's a great story because it's all about redemption. It's all about that the younger yeah. son yeah. saw that he did something wrong. And the older son, so there's jealousy involved. I get it. I mean, I, and, and but the younger son should come back and, and he <laughs> it's just to me, it took a, it's a it took a long time for me to realize that. that and to say yeah. that's what. Yeah. I guess that's what it's all about. It's all about forgiveness. It's, and it's yeah. all about giving yep. the person a second chance. And it's about the father who's like, thankfully, my son is back. And it's yep. about letting go of your son. He let his younger son go. So yep. I guess that as parents, we need to let our younger children go. Hopefully they see the light. Hopefully we've taught them and we've modeled enough that they come back to us. So I'm just joking a little bit. Not too You're much. not joking, joking at all. I, it's, I, this is how my life is. <laughs> I just want to tell you, this is how exciting it is. And I love every minute of it. It is. It is <laughs> Put fun. it out there. Uh, well, he asked me, and I we I went on yeah. a tangent because it yeah. was such a it was, yeah. you say that, and I was like, oh, this is really interesting. <laughs> um, yeah, I would say really long, like Jeremiah, Ezekiel. Those are the texts that my eyes start to cross, and I'm like, what's up? So those are kind of the things that I can get lost in, and 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 it's mostly just my brain has to concentrate, and and that's. I tend to, I'd like to read actively, which is why in 52 weeks in the word, I, I have space for you to write mm -hmm. so that your mind is engaging um, active reading rather than passive reading, because you start thinking about lunch and dinner and <laughs> who you need to pick up and, and you can, your eye, your mind can be distracted. Sure. And so, and so that's, yeah, but, but that's a great question. I think the, the scriptures can be I'm challenging at times to read and that's okay. Yeah. I, I read Isaiah a few weeks ago with a, uh, a, a gentleman who used to play professional football and we just started reading and he said, let's, I said, whatever you want to read, read Isaiah. Isaiah. I'm like, going way over my head on Isaiah. I'm like, I struggle with that text. I don't know. I read it like three times. I'm like, I still, yeah, I still don't know what's going on here. Can you help me out, please? So, that's so great. I, I mean, oh it, it was very, yeah. very challenging. Let read me ask just you, like parts, read Isaiah nine when we get off and you'll be amazed. I will. <laughs> what was your favorite book to write out of all the seven? Oh gosh, that's so hard. Mm -hmm. It's almost like choosing your favorite baby, but not. Uh -huh. I get it. Um, <laughs> what comes to your mind? Bam. First thing that comes to your mind. Okay. Well, I really have enjoyed writing the kids books mm -hmm. and writing the Bible studies in 52 weeks in the word. So those would be my favorite genres that I've written. Yeah. Tell us, tell us about the kids book. Cause obviously, you know, we all have oh. children and we do have a kid's book as well. And so I want to hear about it. Yeah. So I wrote the, there's, oh, I've written three kids books. One is called God's very good idea. And it's all about the beauty of diversity and how God has created us in the Imago Dei, in the image of God. And, um, and, and it's just, the response has been really encouraging and just delightful. Mm -hmm. The second one is um, the the big wide welcome, and it's on James two and the sin of partiality or favoritism, as I call it, and um, and that was just a fun one to write. Also, and then the um, creative God colorful us is kind of God's very good idea for the reader, the middle grade reader. Mm -hmm. Um, I have some more coming out with Crossway, um, which is a publisher that I'm really excited about. Um, and those will come, one of them will come out in September of 2023. So that's exciting. It's it's exciting to watch you talk about the kids book because as a mom, you know, we're, we're trying to do these little things and put ourselves out there for the kids. And it is very encouraging to watch you talk about it and all the work that you're putting into it because- it's again, it's very, it's, it's a responsibility, right? And, and to, to reach out outside of our home to touch other people's children and, and help them and, and encourage them and to, you know, let them know their purpose is just incredible. It's a lot of fun. And I was listening to you on a podcast or in an interview about fear. 
And me and my yeah. wife talk a lot about fear and how can you overcome fear? Is it something you can overcome? I, I don't know if you can. It's always in the back of your mind. What are your your thoughts on fear, overcoming them? I, I mean, coming up against the, your, your fears? Yeah, so I don't think we will ever fully overcome some sort of fear. We're going to have a fear of failure, fear of all sorts of things. And, mm -hmm. you know, I think of the scriptures where Sarah um, didn't fear what was frightening. So there are things that are just going to be frightening. Um, and so, so for me, it's about building the muscle of running to the Lord. So building that, that, and so, it, so kind of like sanctification as, as we grow more and more in the likeness of Jesus, um, we repent quicker. We turn from what we're doing quicker. We confess quicker and we'll be able to run to him quicker as in our fear. So, so I, I'm not. I don't ever anticipate a day <laughs> until I see him face to face where I'm completely fearless. Mm -hmm. I am going to work when my child drives off <laughs> at college. I'm going to, it's going to be like weeping and, <laughs> and I have going to have a unique prayer life because yes. I, I will be so afraid. I know this, but I can entrust him and entrust those cares to the Lord. So, so, these are the kinds of things I don't, yeah, I don't think we're, I think it's false to say that we're going to be overcomers or mm -hmm. as if we're never going to experience hardship. That's yeah. just, it's not the reality in this fallen world. Trillia, I know a guy that if you don't want your kids to go to school, mm -hmm. they don't have to go to college. I can just pull the applications and say no. <laughs> and that fear doesn't have to be, it doesn't have to come real so that, that we can <laughs> overcome that fear. But you said something really interesting and really what I like there is it seems like we just run to the Lord when we need help, not when things are going good. Have you experienced that in your life? Because for me, sometimes I go throughout the day and I just, sometimes I don't, I don't even think about it. That where that gratitude is so important in our lives. Amen. Amen. You know, it makes me think of the scripture. Um, Rejoice, always pray without ceasing and everything gives thanks. Cause this is God's will for you in Christ Jesus. Um, that's first Thessalonians. And I think if you are building a ha habit of Bible reading and engaging with the Lord in reading and prayer, that daily communion, you will be running to him in both good times and sorrow. It's a good reminder. Of course, we then can forget about him the rest of the day. But I think, um, yeah, I think that there's, there is a temptation to, to be self-sufficient, to do things in our own um with our own wisdom and our own understanding and our own strength and not to rely on the lord especially in times of prosperity mm, it's so every, true yeah, yeah last question for oh, i have to i have to put something in there about going to college because our, our oh. oldest has, has left us no <laughs> she, okay she's doing really good work she's leading <laughs> teeth to christ I, I can't complain about that but she's not here she's in georgia and I have to tell you, when she left, it was the most, it was like a struggle for me because I, I had to let, literally let go of control. I had to surrender it. And I'm like, I can't, I, I, every once in a while I'll check her. I'm like, where are you? What are you doing? How are you doing? And I'm like, oh my gosh, I have to let go. And it was that moment where I had to trust God, but I also had to trust her. Yeah. And it was, it was a new, I have to tell you though, we, I learned so much from it. And so I'm looking at it now as like just a, a, an amazing piece of my life where, you know, we always think we're in control. <laughs> we just do. We think we have it all together. Everyone's under our control, but it's not the case. And so it was moments like that when I realized, okay, I just need to surrender this and let it go and let God take care of anything he needs to do. Yeah. So I, you will be there and I want you to let me know how it goes because maybe okay. I'll write another book <laughs> on when my child goes to college, <laughs> what I've learned. <laughs> there you go. Truly. Yeah, it'll Last question for me, uh, technology, because I'm the anti-tech person. Jake and I really are terrible. Do you use any apps? Do you use anything to help you with? <laughs> oh, with Bible? Uh, I love yeah. that you meant just no. in general. No. <laughs> oh, I was like, yes. Instagram. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you could. I guess you could. I mean. Uh... No. Um, I actually, you know, it's interesting. I don't use apps. Um, I, Yeah. So I, do, I don't use a lot of apps. I know that. Okay, so 52 Weeks in the Word 
is a book, but they are creating an app oh. for it also. But I think it's only going to be for a podcast that's going to um, run with also the book. <laughs> uh. Anyways, that that tells you how much I use that. <laughs> so good. I. Yeah, I'm, I don't use a lot of apps, but I know that there's lots like version is a good Bible app and ESV has a Bible app. And so there's lots of apps and um, I, I just don't tend to use a lot of them. We don't either. That's why I asked. I figured, I'm surprised yeah. that you asked that I question. I mean, I was thinking, I, I, I just mind. ordered Costco. She seemed young and she seemed hip and she's like, yeah, I'm into this <laughs> technology stuff. And yeah, so I figured, you know. Okay, how old do you think I am? <laughs> <laughs> you don't have to answer that. That's a, I that's know a better thing. than that. You know what I mean? I'm not making that mistake, you know? <laughs> awesome so funny. i got called a grandmother this weekend so i just want to tell you that so yeah. uh, i think we're all the same age just yeah. so you know uh, it's Julie, a good age I, this has been really an, to me an enjoyable conversation where can the listeners where can they get a hold of you where can they buy the books where they can where can they visit your website if you can spell my name which is the hard part you can find me because everything's at trillia newbell.com t-r-i-l-l-i-a n-e-w B E L L dot com. And I want to thank Trillia for triggering me. I haven't been triggered on a podcast. Oh, it's that been was a long fun. time. Thank but you. you know what? In reality, I love it. I triggered myself. So I'm not, oh. am I a Gen Z or I just, you know what? I just love when you get like that. It, ma it makes me happy. I just sit back and it's like, it's like watching a show. You know what I mean? It's just like I get my popcorn out, you know? You enjoyed it, I huh? Love it. I'm here to please, baby. <laughs> That's what the job is. Here to please. Uh, I really want to, I want to thank you for coming on. This was a lot of fun. I really enjoyed this. And go to everyone, go to trillianubal.com if you are seriously considering stepping up your game yep. and allowing christ to take over mm -hmm. and to submit to his will follow, <laughs> follow trillia nubu thank you trillia we appreciate it uh, follow jesus but thanks <laughs> thank you guys <laughs> and follow trillia through jesus I mean, <laughs> there you go. <laughs> thank, thank you, guys. you thanks yep. everybody bye <laughs>